Hey everyone, welcome to Figure Fantasy. So we're here with Milim discussing, we're going to discuss her strategy and build guide, how to maximize her. And I was, you know, very happy to get her early, of course, to showcase this to you guys. And uh, let's start off with her skills. So basic attack is going to be Demon Lord's Blazing Strike. Range is nine slots. Attacks an enemy starts from the first enemy in the same line. It's so the usual attack speed is going to be fast, which is kind of decent already. But if you want to go more than that and to have her, you know, land her basic attacks quickly, then you have to upgrade her attack speed. Upgrade effect is going to be from level 1, a 25% um, basic attack boost. And at level 3, another 25% 20, 20 attack boost for basic attack so moving on to her um ultimate so drago buster initial energy is 60 attacks a target and adjacent enemies and after the enemy's damage there is a 50 percent chance to attack one more time so twice or double double the fun double the damage and um again can be up to a maximum of two times the damage decreases by 40 percent which with each subsequent attack so enemies with honeypot or under control effects will always be hit with the maximum number of attacks so this is gonna be uh, this is gonna hurt a bit for mobs so um if you pair her with rimuru they're gonna clean up a lot of mobs for you so it's it's all about building teams around the both of them so energy regeneration for her ultimate is six per second Upgrade effect at level 2. Each time the ultimate deals damage, there is a 20% chance of inflicting poison for 8 seconds. So this is going to be a good add-on for damage and utility as well. And the ultimate deals 30% more damage to poison enemies. So take note of that. Level 3 is going to be better. If the ultimate fails to kill the target, unleashes Drago Buster again. <laughs> So these, you know, these mobs are not going to live long because of um, the triggers of her ultimate. Unleash Dragon Buster again, but the second attack will not trigger an additional attack. So it's just an additional single attack from Drago Buster or Drago Buster. Okay, so next is going to be Demon's... Demon Lord's Pillage inflict honeypot on a target at the start of the battle, which reduces the target's basic attack power to twenty of or sorry by twenty percent. So, damage reduction, which is gonna be good because this if, he, if she's at the back of a defender, this is gonna be damage reduction for that defender. By the way, and every four basic attack that uh, Melin performs on target, pillage is triggered once if the basic attack target does not carry a honeypot then milim will inflict honeypot on a target again so what is pillage guys pillage is attack the attack the ba attack the basic attack target and deal 40 percent splash damage to adjacent targets and stun the units for one second so this plays more on how frequent your basic attack is again the the faster the attack speed um, uh, this will trigger often as well. So upgrade effect for the passive is going to be level 2. Steal 9 energy from the target when pillaging. And when the target carrying the honeypot dies, the honeypot will spread to the surrounding target. So very good level 2. At level 3, when a new unit receives a honeypot, Milim gains immunity and 25% bonus attack for 5 seconds. So again... Additional gains control immunity and um, additional bonus attack for 5 seconds. So that's um, going to be it. And her special is going to be boost damage by 15%. Milim Eye when there is no surrounding enemies. Boost attack by 5% and crit by 10. Boost damage by 25% when there is no enemy or uh, no surrounding enemies. Okay. So moving forward... Before we discuss the parts of uh, the parts or gears of Milim, there are two types of builds for Milim. E either you focus on her ultimate or you focus on her passive, which is tied to her attack speed. Okay, moving on to parts. So for parts, definitely you have again, as I've said, focus focusing on ultimate, focusing on passive. So for me, I am focusing on her ultimate. Uh, ultimate set here and I have here crit set 
The other option also uh, for instead of ultimate set obviously is going to be your attack speed. It's going to show you guys um, quick attack, quick attack set. So this is going to also be critical if you choose to, you know, choose to take advantage over passive. So quick attack or ultimate for the four piece set and um, for the two piece set here, either crit or if you want additional survivability for her, you could go with HP. So HP is the way to go. So again, four piece set would be ultimate. Then, um, uh, sorry, four piece set would be ultimate or attack speed. Then two piece set would be either crit hit or HP. Okay, moving on to her badge. Um, the, the first option is this one, your end time ultimate badge. This is geared towards more damage for her ultimate. That is why I'm putting it here. This is easier to put up to level level 12 or level 14, I think. I forgot. The other um, the other badge that uh, you can consider is the Th Thunder Summoner or Eternal Nightmare badge. So this is going to be more for your passive because boost attack speed by 10 and basic attacks a 21% chance to bounce lightning off four times. Each dealing equal to 80% of attack. So this is more geared for boosting of attack speed. So for adornment, let me just go to the store and um, let me see what we have here. Adornment, um, she's going to be military. So this definitely is one of the options that you have for adornment. Um, exclusive for military. So boost attack speed, so definitely leaning towards the passive. But... For this one, this is easier to get rather than the exclusive one and increases the amount of energy restored by extra two. Deactivates for eight seconds when attack. So this is going to be good because she's going to be a militarist. Um, let's go over to, to the two uh, gears that you have to buy, but let's do preview them because um, they're available now just in case you want them. This one, this, this adornment, this is geared towards her passive because it's obviously enhanced the passive. But again, even the mechanics is really meant for her to um, take advantage of her passive. The other one which I'm inclined to get, which is this one, which I'm th still thinking about, is going to be um, this one. So figurine exclusive each basic attack performed on a hit carrying a honeypot will grant the wearer one energy. So it, you know, uh, kind of gives her an edge on um, generating energy for ultimate. And uh, after the uh, wearer's ultimate is over, there is a 40% uh, chance to trigger Drago Buster again. So Drago Buster, this is going to trigger her ultimate again. So uh, if I'm going to be getting either of these two, not both of them, I'm going to get this one. Definitely, definitely for for her this is going to be her badge so the um, adornment i'd rather get the one that is not exclusive um this is going to be expensive <laughs> so that is it okay as far as team composition is concerned definitely um rimuru if your deal if you if you are creating a team to control mobs or crowd control definitely rimuru will be with milim both of them have a good synergy to take advantage of the other one that i'm suggesting with her is an energy team so that she could uh, more or less spam her um her ultimate as quick as possible Definitely, um, Zephyr will be one of them that will really help her in terms of generating energy. So, um, I don't think she'll have a problem joining other teams. You can really splash her with any team as of now. Even without, even without Rimuru, she's going to be good as a standalone. Okay, so for as for content is, is concerned, final battle, especially for Code V and Azazel, would be good. I cannot showcase this now because I forgot to reserve this for this video and already I was able to um, sweep this earlier. So Code V and Azazel, she would be good there. PVP, let's do a demo for PVP while we're while we're here. I've tried to take her in PVP, so defense power, so. 
this uh, let's look for a, a good match so this one so for pvp she's going to she's going to crush the opponent at this point um i think um she's gonna stay here or sorry not disseminate the uh this 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 dissipate or anyway what the <laughs> I forgot what the word is, but it's Desi something. But anyway, so as you can see here, um, ultimate really, really, really hits hard. T took out two, then I, again, um, I I don't care if um, Miko is there. She's not gonna make much of a dent, especially if you have Zephyr. But as you can see, if uh, both Rimuru and Milim tag teams the damage they do is really 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 absurd so there you go so rimuru so i still have five right five on the board rimuru and the opponent is one that's left plus miko dancing upstairs so, so far it's gonna be good so far for pvp i like this lineup and um there you go so for PvP, that lineup is, I think, very interesting. So for Nightmare, I already prepared um, this uh, stage here. So we have here this. If you can see here, if you have um, really big bosses in front, um, and if you have AoE damage, definitely you're going to be going through um, the first boss in front. So, restores. Let's do something random here. Okay. So, as long as you have uh, Zuki Liang at the back, I don't think any enemy is a uh, any enemy would be a threat to you. As you can see there, double ultimate. So, Zuki Liang will be your you know your safety net here. So as you can see, we're about to breach the front. Two ultimates. Again, <laughs> she uh, she does wonders actually for you know in clearing stages, cl clearing mobs. That's it. So Rimuru and Milim try to as much as possible, um, you know, combine both of them. Although Milim is gone, but definitely this is going to be a clear. And Milim was. Really, really instrumental in clearing bosses and uh, doing her ultimate. Okay, so final thoughts for Milim. Great AoE ultimate twice. If you take advantage of her ultimate, she's going to sh shred opponents to pieces. Especially um, mobs again in PvP as well. Um, she's going to be really, really good in PvP. Passive crowd control with her, you know, with her passive and her um, a basic attack damage will also give you a different perspective on how she can control, um, for example, enemies or the board on your enemy side. So again, she has two builds: one taking, you know, taking advantage over ultimate, and the one taking advantage over passive. But definitely, I'm recommending you build her towards her ultimate. So anyway, guys, that is it. And hopefully this uh, guide and strategy helped you in, you know, building Milim if you have her. And probably have some inspiration if you're still trying to get her on how she is good and how she's going to be worth it once you have her. So anyway, guys, for those who have stuck this far, please do consider subscribing because this helps my channel a lot. Thank you. Stay safe. Take care. This is The Warden and I'm out of here.